Yeah. My name is Kevin Austin, um, and this is my first exhibition here in Melbourne where I live, and it's called Liverpool. It's a post-war narrative. The inspiration for all my artwork is actually from this photograph I took in 1974, uh, which, as you can see, it shows the very last I was standing in the shadow of the mighty Anglican Cathedral. Yeah, this piece of artwork basically represents survival, picking up the pieces after the terrible Second World War and the Liverpool Blitz, which tragically lost, had lost over 4,000 lives throughout Merseyside. It's about people living amongst the part of the ruins, getting on with their lives, and the ladies sort of hanging up to watch it. You've got teddy boys hatching their plan. You've got kids playing in disused old cars, and a little footy match going on there. Uh, and it's about survival, really. And from it, you know, very typical of the strength of Liverpool people, creativity emerged. This piece basically shows the community as it was before the corporation's program of uh, demolition, complete demolition. And what it shows here is a whole community of, of houses, of businesses, corner shops, little pubs that survived for four generations. And that every single building inside, in front of the front of the cathedral, was demolished under the city's regeneration program. Of course, many people wanted to move because of the conditions they were living in, but, uh, but an awful lot wanted to remain. The 60s and overall saw a lot of creativity emerge. As we here, we can see there was the, uh, the Liverpool poets, you know, the Roger McGough, Brian Patton, um, Adrian Henry, and then of course we've got the, the, the very famous Everyman Theatre, where people, uh, as Julie Walters, Pete Pothelwaite, um, Bernard Hill, they all attended that theatre. Following on in the early 60s, the very famous The Mersey Beat Sound, which was all the emergence of people like Jerry and the Pacemakers, The Searchers, and uh, of course, The Beatles, who went on to phenomenal international fame. Obviously growing up in Liverpool, I'm a huge Beatles fan, and in particular, John Lennon. Uh, I grew up at a similar period, I saw the band de develop, and, um, and it was around about the same time. Now these two, these two works here show Strawberry Field, where John used to play as a child, and was an inspiration behind several of his songs, and including, of course, the famous Strawberry Fields Forever. The top one, shows a young John looking with curiosity across to what would be a lovely playground of the woods and trees to build and climb trees and dens with, with some of his friends. The bottom one here represents what was the old orphanage house, which was sadly, it was demolished in the early 70s, allegedly because it was full of dry rot. <laughs> Yeah. Strawberry Fields was actually run as um, an orphanage run by the Salvation Army and it was, uh, I think it started in 1934, right up to present day. This one shows the iconic gates for the very young John, um, again, sitting in a tree, looking at this playground, if you like, and this is my interpretation of it all. Okay. Yeah. After many years of inactivity at the Strawberry Field home, um, recently they've opened up a new centre here, again with the same aims of supporting young people who've got social and learning difficulties. And uh, it, it looks a wonderful centre there. This, this painting 
shows where a young John aged 10, that's where he, he lived uh, in this semi here called Mendips, running on Mendoff Avenue, um, where he was brought up with by his auntie Mimi. Uh, this shows in a contemporary way, from traveling home on a bus back home. And in the early 50s, there were trams running up and down the center boulevards throughout Liverpool. This is another one showing another in another contemporary way. John sitting in a bus going past the strawberry fields. And I believe a lot that like a lot of us, when people didn't have cars, we spent a lot of our time looking through windows and taking in and forming impressions and interpreting them in different ways later on. Um, a fine feature of Liverpool is the actual is the Otterpool Promenade, which is about four miles long and extends from the southern end of Egbert right to the city centre. It was built in several stages. The first stage of construction was started in 1925 at the same time as the Queensway Tunnel linking Liverpool to Birkenhead, where the excavations were used as part of the infill for the new between the new concrete prom and the shoreline. The second stage started in the late 50s from Jericho Lane to Dingle Oil Jetty, taking with it the Cast Iron Shore, or the Kazi as we called it. Again, the huge area between the new concrete prom and the shoreline had to be filled in and it became the city's rubbish tip for several years. But many do not know what else was used as infill. The City Corporation implemented a scheme to get your old cars off the road where you could take your old bang in there and get a few bob. Batteries and tyres were removed and then the cars, they weren't crushed, but they were stacked on top of each other before being covered in rubbish. This work is called Girl in a Pink Coat, Auto Holocaust. And it's an allegorical work. It's depicting cars, thousands of them, being sent to their fate. I just think of all those lovely cars now, many would-be classics, including my own, all down there under all that rubbish. Further south of Ottersville Prom are two smaller proms belonging to Grassendale Park and Cressington Park with fine Victorian houses, many of which were owned by wealthy shipping merchants. This work, called Girl in the Pink Coat, she appears in quite a few, it's, it's called A Private View, set in the mid-60s, and it shows North Road with its prom and a view looking across the water to Eastern Ferry and the entrance to the Manchester Ship Canal. And indeed, in recent years, Anthony Gormley has recognised Liverpool for its great creativity. And further, a great place to put his 100 Iron Man sculptures called Another Place. And it's ideal. It was, it's as it says here, it's, it's, it's defined as man, not only as man's exposure to the elements, but it's also uh, a meditation on immigration, driving human beings westward to America for a new life, for trade, and also with the history and tragedy of slavery. <laughs> and this is what I call, just call Mersey Nocturne, which is a timeless view looking across the water from Seacombe across to this famous skyline of Liverpool and the Three Graces, the cathedral, timeless. It'll be there for not changed for centuries.